Hello YouTube! Okay, so this week's drawing is a piece of sort of fanish personal art that kind of got out of hand. Uh, for those who don't know, I am a huge tabletop role-playing game nerd. Um, I play a variety of games. This one in particular is from a setting called Exalted, which is currently being published by Onyx Path. Um, this was a scene from our last game, where basically our party ran into this temple to the sun god that looked all perfect and pristine when the light was on it, through the little, like, um, skylight in the, the ceiling. And then when a cloud passed over it, like, passed over the sun, uh, the whole place was kind of covered in this, like, black corrupting slime, which was super ominous and really not a good thing. Uh, anyways, I thought the visual was really cool. And I got into my head that it would be neat to illustrate it as a little animated GIF that showed both versions of the temple. So my philosophy for drawing backgrounds is basically cheat as much as you can get away with. Uh, I don't really love drawing architecture, even though I'm getting a little better at it every time I do it. But I basically want to try and spend as little time on it as I can get away with. Um, how much I cheat really depends on the purpose of what I'm drawing. Uh, if I'm doing a big background for, say, a print where people are expected to be looking at it for a long time and taking all the details, then that means I have to spend a lot more time and take care that any sort of cheats I'm using really don't show. But for something more like a webcomic page where most people are just going to be looking at it briefly, or for a piece of personal art like this where I really don't care about making it perfect, I try and figure out all the little ways I can get away with doing less work than I would do if I was doing everything from scratch. And for a symmetrical design like this, being drawn on the computer, that meant only drawing one side and then copying it over uh, and mirroring it so I had both sides of the piece. One of the problems with the using the mirroring trick is that it can tend to make a picture look really unnatural. Um, most of the time in reality, things aren't actually perfectly mirrored like that, and if that's not an effect you're going for, then that can be a real problem. So one of the things I like to do when I'm cheating in this particular way is make sure that I'm making a few changes to each side after the copying, and that kind of helps make them feel a little less identical when you're just looking them over quickly. Um, so for this piece, that meant doing the statue completely unsymmetrically, even though it's kind of a vaguely symmetrical build, but making sure there were parts that were distinct. And then also making some changes with the benches and the little rugs on the ground, and then doing the, the murals on the wall in afterwards. Um, other stuff for this piece, um, back when I was doing the sketching, you might have seen me using perspective lines. Uh, they were kind of in pink. Uh, that's sort of a hack I use with Paint Tool Sci, which I have covered in another video. If you've seen some of my other videos, you've probably seen me mention this before, but I will link that either around the edge if I can figure out how to do that on YouTube, or just in the description box below. So if you want to check out that video in particular to see what tools I'm using to get that, then you can do that through there. Uh, it's definitely a really useful trick if you're doing perspective on Paint Tool Sci to have some kinds of guidelines. I mean, it's always helpful to have guidelines for perspective, and um, using the line art layers and paint tool sci is the most convenient method I've found to get those into the program because it doesn't have an actual real life perspective grid. So for coloring, I kept the colors very monochrome. Uh, partly that was just to get the kind of like solid gold, really intimidating look for the temple, but in all honesty, I was also sort of running out of steam on the piece, so I just wanted to keep the coloring pretty easy. Um, I also did know before I was starting the coloring that I wanted to be using overlay layers to add some of the more dramatic shading, because then I could change those overlay layers to get a few different looks for the little animation process at the end. So I didn't worry too much about making the shading really bold or detailed when I was going in and doing the first pass on the individual color layers. You can also pretty easily notice here when I'm zooming out that I'm using a much larger canvas than I'm actually drawing into. Uh, that's just because with a really complicated perspective piece like this, especially when I was expecting to be flipping, uh, it was easier to give myself a little bit of that extra leeway and draw a little over the edge on the canvas and then crop it down afterwards than it would have been to draw everything exactly to the edge of the canvas. And then if I was just a little bit off on exactly where the center of the canvas was, I might be left with a little gap on the other side and have to resize things. Um, 
So yeah, I just found like setting myself a little rectangle in the middle and treating the rest as not part of the final piece, but just sort of scratch space was a little bit easier with this particular composition. Uh, yeah, so the finishing process for this basically just involved layering shading over top of the, the finished colored piece with different layer modes and opacities. Uh, as I said, this was designed to be a short, short animation like very, very short animation. So I wanted to use layer effects to create kind of two different moods to the piece without actually having to redraw anything or do much recoloring, if at all possible. Um, so once I was happy with the sunlit mode, I just turned off the light effect layer and adjusted the top layer to be more blue tinted to give kind of a shadowy effect. And then I did some more layers over top of that to draw on the kind of corrupting black mold stuff separately so I could turn it on and off. As far as I know, uh, Paint Tool Side doesn't have an animation mode, so to finish this off, I just basically saved off, I think, five different versions of this with varying amounts of light or shadow, and then cropped them and imported them into Clip Studio Paint, which I'm really still just starting to learn. Uh, but it's got a simple animation mode now, so it was easy for me to just bring in those um, individual clips and fiddle around on the animation timeline until I was happy with how they were laid out. Um, and that was pretty much it. I didn't really go into a lot of detail here about the animation process, just because it's something I'm not really that familiar with yet, so I don't really feel qualified to give like a tutorial or anything. Uh, but if you do have any questions about this particular piece, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I really hope I will see you around in the next video.